Hello, my creative friends. It is a new Monday, which means it's time for a new creativity pep talk. If you have been watching over on YouTube, you know this is the fourth week that I have done these creativity pep talks on Monday, and it is such a nice way to start the week with some positivity, with some encouragement, some inspiration to carry you gently into the week. <laughs> so welcome, welcome, wherever you are. I am very grateful for you. Hitting subscribe is always a good thing. And if you have a minute to give a thumbs up or leave a little note, a little review, let me know what you think of the episode. If you found anything helpful, it helps me to know what kinds of stuff you like to hear about. First of all, hello. <laughs> I'm Shannon Sorensen. I am an artist, a photographer, a painter, a all-around creative spirit, and I am also mama to two beautiful kiddos who are napping <laughs> and at school. So right now it is like the golden hour to get stuff done. This week we are talking about spring cleaning and probably not the way that you think about spring cleaning, but kind of, all right, it all, it all ties in together. So we today are about one week away from the actual first day of spring on the calendar year. Today is Monday, March 15th, and the first day of spring, I think is the 22nd, so about a week away. And as you all know, probably, <laughs> this time of year is a time that a lot of people will focus some energy on cleaning out their house. And the reason for this, I think, I'm not a scientist. <laughs> I think the reason for this is because we spend so much time at home, inside, throughout the winter. And we are constantly seeing our stuff. We're looking around, we're seeing what we actually have, the things that we have accumulated and the things that we have brought into our home. We are constantly looking around and seeing this stuff and realizing maybe we don't need, maybe we don't use, maybe we don't want some of this stuff anymore. But as we are transitioning out of winter and into spring, we are thinking, we're going to get out of the house, we're going to open the windows, we're going to let the sun shine in, and it's a really good time to feel motivated to let things go, right? So I want to talk about this a little bit in regards to the past year that we have all experienced, because given that it is coming up on spring, we are also coming up on a time where we are hopefully going to be emerging from pandemic life. So about a year ago, a year ago this week, we all started staying home and it's been a long year. And I would call this past year a winter of our lives because we have spent an enormous amount of time in our houses with our stuff and looking around at our stuff and our lives and our habits and everything about us and thinking, hmm, maybe I want to make some changes. Maybe I need to declutter my life. Maybe there are some things that I can let go of. And now that we are at a phase of looking ahead with hope and excitement for being able to go out and do things and spend time outside and see the people that we love. Now is a time to look around, maybe with fresh eyes, you know, it's been a long year. Look around with fresh eyes and decide, make some decisions, make some choices about what we want to keep and what we want to let go of. Look at what we want to donate. Look at what we want to trash. Look at what we want to give away. I mean, there's 
we've accumulated a lot, all right? As human beings, we accumulate things. We accumulate possessions. We accumulate feelings. We accumulate baggage, literal, emotional, physical baggage. We, we hold on to stuff. Because I think a lot of times when we're going through transitions and times of change and times of struggle, we try to focus on what we have, right? We focus on being grateful for what we have. But then we hit a point where we have to take a look at the things we have and ask, is this serving me? Is this something worth holding on to? Do I value it? Does it bring me joy? Do I use it? Is it functioning or is it broken? And these can be physical things. These can be possessions, items physically in our homes that we hold on to that maybe need to be passed along or let go or trashed. (laughs) And there are also emotional things. There are things in our lives that we hold on to that when we are spending so much time at home with ourselves, it kind of becomes a little uncomfortably obvious that we need to deal with some of these things. So for instance, I know a lot of people have come to a realization that they don't want to keep doing the jobs that they've been doing. They're not happy, they're not fulfilled, they're not challenging, and it's draining them. I have someone very close to me who has recently decided she's done. She's done what she's been doing for many years. And when she made the decision to let go of what has been holding her down for so long, it's like she was a new person. You could see this lightness to her. Her burden had lifted. All right, so we carry things. We carry a lot of things. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally. So this is what I would call prime time for spring cleaning and unburdening our lives, our homes. I want to bring up something that might be kind of icky to talk about, but I think it needs to be talked about. Um, And I know a lot of you will know what I'm talking about, but let's talk about the junk drawer, okay? A lot of homes have a junk drawer. Every home I have ever lived in has had a junk drawer, and it's usually in the kitchen, and it's usually the drawer closest to the doorway. (laughs) Um, But it becomes a space where you literally shove stuff in that you don't want to think about. You don't know where to put it. It's broken, but you can't let go of it. You have all these things and it's not organized. It's never organized. And if you do organize it, it very quickly becomes junky again. And, you know, you cram as much stuff into this drawer, this tiny space that eventually When you do need something from the drawer, you can't find it. Or you might not even be able to open the drawer because it's so clogged up. It takes so much work to unclog this little space because you have crammed it so tight with stuff. All right, so if you have a junk drawer, and we can also talk about how the junk drawer is maybe us, like physically our bodies, we become junk drawers. We stuff so much inside of us. We hold on to so much. We hold on to stuff that's broken. We hold on to stuff that doesn't feel good. We hold on to stuff because we just don't know what to do with it emotionally. That when it comes time to cleanse it, it feels like a lot. And then we don't know what to do or we become so overwhelmed that we're like, uh, I'll just deal with myself later. (laughs) So I don't have much advice because I'm an artist. I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a a therapist. So this might be maybe a nudge if you've been feeling the need to talk to someone. Maybe this is your nudge, your little sign to make that call. I know I've been feeling that, but coming out of this year and all the things that we have 
packed onto ourselves, all the things that we've clung to, all the things that we have gathered up and held on to for dear life because, oh my goodness, what a year, right? And I do not say that lightly. I don't say that lightly at all. We've all dealt with so much. Big things, little things, really hard things. I don't know anyone who hasn't been affected by the past year in a major way. It has changed us. You know, this winter, this year of being inside and hibernating and waiting for hope, for spring, for being able to go out and do things. And I don't even think it's about getting back to normal, but looking forward to a time where we can do things that we know make us happy, right? So part of the spring cleaning is letting go of old habits and things we used to do that we've come to realize we don't enjoy. In past years, I have felt the need to do camps and play dates and travel and all sorts of activities to stay busy. And I think I realized I don't like being busy. I like being able to go and do things but I also like being able to not do things and not feeling the obligation to go out and do things. Sometimes it's nice to just sit outside and let the kids run around and you don't have to go somewhere to do that. So a lot of this year has been coming to terms with letting go of what we don't like, right? Acknowledging that there's a lot that we do in our lives that why do we do them? Because we feel like we have to, but we don't have to. You know, so spring cleaning time. Yes, it's a time to actually look around our physical spaces and do a little cleaning if we feel the need, which I know I do. <laughs> because also the aspect of spending so much time at home, we have created these spaces of comfort for ourselves, right? We have maybe surrounded ourselves with stuff that helps us feel good, helps us smile, and that's a good thing. I think really reevaluating how we live in our space is important. And I know some people have taken a good look around and said, I have to change things up because seeing so much stuff stresses me out. Like when we didn't spend so much time in our houses, maybe we didn't realize it or maybe we didn't mind so much because we knew, oh, well, tomorrow I'm going to work for eight hours. I'm not going to be here looking at all of this, <laughs> right? So it's been a big time this year of evaluating, of looking around and deciding how we want to move forward how we want to go out into this spring, into this new time, post-COVID, all right? It's, a t it's an era. It really is because we are changed. It is a new stage of living as humans on this earth where we are deciding what to bring with us because we have had the opportunity, we've had the circumstance, we've had the situation of taking a look around and deciding what we want to take with us. You know, when people ask you, if your house were to burn down, what would you take with you? It's kind of similar to that, right? Like the world has felt like a house on fire and we are scrambling to hold on to what we love and hold that close and not take it for granted. So I think it has helped put a lot into perspective of what we actually care about, of what we really value, and probably a lot of stuff that we've held on to, but we're ready to release and let go from our lives. So I'm curious what maybe those things are for you or what you have found that you really value and really want to hold on to. You know, for me, nothing means more to me than my family. Nothing means more to me. I will sacrifice so many things to just be with my family. And if that means not going out as much, not making as many plans, like 
I have found I really enjoy being home. I really enjoy making our home a space that's cozy, that is colorful, that has books and music and games. You know, thinking about this past year and what we've all gone through, the challenges we have faced, the adjustments we've all made. I'm ready. I'm ready for spring. I'm ready to go hug my mom as soon as I can. I have realized what I want and what I need in this life. And if I can give you some encouragement for this week, it's to sit and look around and think, what do I want to take with me? And what can I leave behind? What, how can I unburden? What can I let go so that I could feel light? So I don't feel so heavy. So I don't feel so burdened. So I don't feel held back. What can you let go? What can you throw away in your spring cleaning to feel better going into this new time, this new time of hope and newness, this time of change. A lot of us have gone through big changes. I look at all the different directions my life has gone. I look at all the different ways my life could have gone. And I know at the end of the day, by trusting myself and being open to change and being open to letting things go, and to knowing in my heart what I truly love and value and need has made such a difference in how I spend my life, and how I spend my time. So friends, wherever you are, I am so grateful for you. If this episode helped you in some way, I would love to hear from you in the comments or in a review. Let me know. Let's keep this conversation going. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you get new episodes, notifications when there's something new to watch or listen to. If you are looking to learn more about me and my work, you can look in the show notes below. There are links to my website. There are links to my Patreon, um, which is a monthly subscription to support me and my creative work. For $5 a month, you can become an official Patreon member. And every single month, I send you four new coloring pages when you are subscribed as a member. So that's something to consider. And I hope you have a beautiful week. Wherever you are, whatever you're up to, make it a good one. You're awesome. Mwah.